Hello. Are you okay down there? I'll figure out a way to help you out. Don't worry. The small creature reassured the Alva as it started to explore the new found cave. Oh, I can see it moving about. Lighting up one hole to the next. That's really cool. Okay, there's a lot, a lot down here. Including the horrendous feet of one of the trolls. Burger Kungan's tail. A long, hairy tail was sticking out from behind Burger Kungan's massive body. I should be wary where I place my feet. The small creature thought as it gently inched its way around the tail. Can I tug on it? Just the thought of pulling at Burger Kungan's tail made the small creature frightened. Yeah, let's not do that. It'd be fun, though. Casket. A stone casket crushed by the weight of the trolls was barely peeking out beneath the rocks and rubble. A keyhole means there must be a key nearby somewhere. The creature reasoned with itself as it started to lift up surrounding rocks in search of it. The creature was unable to pry open the locked casket with its fingers. Well, I don't think I have a key right now, so I guess I'll have to look for it. I guess I could try shoving a bent dagger inside of the keyhole, but I don't think that would work. Venomous, wild mushrooms were spreading aggressively throughout the cave. Uh, venomous? You mean poisonous? Is there such a thing as a venomous mushroom? Well, I guess in this world there probably is. You there, D don't come any closer. The small creature warned the mushrooms, taking a defensive stance. I guess just like the toadstools, these ones are probably alive. The small creature dared not to disturb the hazardous looking mushrooms. Alter. Well, that looks complicated. A lone stalagmite was standing in the cave. I know you're there. Come out and show yourself. The small creature commanded the stalagmite, but it didn't seem capable of responding. Feeling the stalagmite's rough surface with its hand, the small creature searched for a beard, yet could not find one. <laughs> I think this one actually is a stalagmite. Let's try the runes out. Ooh. Made the mushrooms go all... all weird. Vibrant jewel. Ooh, the trolls would love that. A precious gemstone rested safely inside a cavity in the wall. A fossil? Well, let's finish with the jewel first. Something glowing is swirling around inside. What could it be? The small creature pondered as it peeked into the gemstone. The gemstone was too indented into the rock for the creature to get a firm grasp around it. Maybe I could pry it out with the bent dagger? Hmm. Luckily for the creature, the dagger had been bent at an angle to slide perfectly into the cavity behind the gemstone. With some endeavor, the gemstone came loose at the same time causing the dagger to return to its original shape. Whoa! Hi. 
Didn't expect that. A large eye is spreading a scorching light throughout the lower level of the cave. The gemstone had been. Yep, yeah, too hot. Maybe I could use the cloth to pick it up safely. There we go. Using the old canvas, the creature was able to pick up the hot gemstone. I don't suppose I can have a chat with the eye? A large glowing eye had revealed itself upon the removal of the gemstone, observing the creature in silence as it moved about the cave. I'm sorry. I hope it wasn't me who woke you up, the small creature said, holding its hands in front of its face, struggling to look at the bright eye. I guess it doesn't talk. The heat stemming from the large eye made it impossible for the creature to touch it. All right, let's take a look at the fossil. Inside the cave wall, packed between dirt and rock, rested the remains of an ancient creature. Hmm, this doesn't look like anything I've met before. The creature muttered to itself as it tried to imagine what the creature had looked like if it had still been alive. To be frank, I can't even see the fossil. I actually have no idea. What part of this is actually the fossil? I don't even see the shape of it. it. Just looks like rock to me. The small creature hesitated, realizing that brushing away the dirt with its hand might break the fragile bones. Fair enough, let's leave it. All right, maybe if I put the leather straps down below, I can get the Alva up. Hmm. 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 Hmm, no, no. Apparently not. You think I'd just be able to, you know, put the leather straps down there, have her grab on, and pull her up? Hmm. Let's see, can I go back up? I can. Perhaps I should give them the jewel? As the creature emerged from the hole, it spotted the slim-nosed troll throwing the pendant on the ground, shattering it. Filthy craftsmen, who can't even separate fool's gold from the real thing. If I find them, I shall give them a quick departure from their pathetic existence. Muttering and cursing, he turned back to rummage around in his treasure pile. Hmm. If he's turned around, even though he actually obviously isn't, maybe I can get the orb piece now? The slim nose trot. Okay, apparently not. Here you go. Hmm. Here you go. Hmm. Here you go. Hmm. Hmm. No. The slim-nosed troll was busy stacking his gold coins, taking no notice of the creature. Apparently not too busy because I still can't be so pick up the orb piece. Hmm. All right, so I got the mushroom problem, the eye problem. And then there has to be a way to lead her out of the crevice. Oh, there's a lot of things. Oh my god. Stab the mushrooms, yes. No.
the Alva had fallen through one of the many holes in the cave floor. There has to be a way to help her find her way out of there. The creature thought, following the Alva's movements beneath the ground. The small creature reached down into the hole, but could not feel the bottom. Alright, maybe she simply needs light. In which case, could I do that by... Well, it is a reflective ring, and there's a lot of light down here, but where would I use it? On the hole? Hmm. Hmm. Like, I want to reflect the light down there. Hmm. Hmm. But how? Hmm. Hmm. What about the Vibrant Jewel? Hmm. I think I need to reflect light down there, but I don't know how. Or once again, just put the leather straps down there. Hmm. Which seems far too logical to possibly be a solution, of course. Okay. Oh, dear God. Right, well, I obviously lack the knowledge to even complete this. So there's little point. Looks like everything in the middle to the left moves counterclockwise, and everything on the right moves clockwise? Yeah. Good to know. I'm thinking the answers to that might be on the orb piece. I see some... some symbols. As for what to do with this stuff, I don't know. We're about to find out. Let's see here. Bone shards? What the hell? I think it's a little bit ahead of what I'm doing. Oh yeah, you're you're supposed to use the the reflecting ring. You're just supposed to use it on the stalagmite. Of course, because using it on the hole wasn't logical enough. As soon as the eye's radiant gaze met the ring, an intense beam of light shot out of the ring's jewel, disappearing into the ceiling. Suddenly, a shriek of agony could be heard from the cavern up above. Uh, what? It isn't even to light this up down there? Wh what? I, how can I even tell that there's a hole in the ceiling? I can't, because I can't see it. Okay, what have I done? My eyes, it burns. How is the wheel of heaven's wrath reaching us here? The slim-nosed troll shrieked, desperately trying to cover his eyes from the ray of light pointed at his face. You know, it might be a good idea to move. Yeah. Like, if you have a light shining in your face, you can just move over to the side, like, two feet. But anyway... Mine. With the troll distracted, the small creature was able to sneak closer and nab the glass shard. Who goes there? The slim-nosed troll cried out as he tried to make out who was approaching him through his fingers. If even a single shiny is missing, I will find you and turn your skin inside out. You filthy thieves! You know, I have to have to note too that the other trolls are looking literally right at me. You think they'd kind of know what I just did and maybe would be a little protective of their friend? I don't think they hate him that much. Anyway. Alright, Norb Peace. So, how do I use it? I have no idea. Hmm. 
What do I do with it? Hmm. It doesn't seem to help me at all. Hey, what happened to this? Did it melt? Uh, oh, the, uh, the eye is shut. A lone stalagmite was... St I know you're there. Come out. Feeling the stalagmite's rough... Hmm. Nothing I can do with it. Hmm. I feel like I need the other pieces of the orb. But how would I go about that? Ew. I regret pressing that again. Actually, wait a minute. I have poisonous stuff in the cup. Maybe I can use that to take out the mushrooms? Or even the chest. Maybe I can melt the chest. No, nope. mushrooms? Yes! Pouring the putrid contents of the chalice onto the mushrooms caused them to pulsate, letting off a cloud of spores before returning to their slumber. Wow, the description wasn't kidding when it said that the chalice seemed endless. It literally has an endless flow. I don't even know how that's possible. It's actually not. But okay. The small. So, how does that help me? You there? I'm not really sure what that did. What did that do? Venomous wild mud. That doesn't seem to have helped anything. It's cursed! It's cursed! The fat-nosed troll chanted. The hunger, the itching, only bad luck comes my way. Ever since I got this piece of glass, I can find nothing to eat in this damnable place. And now my whole body burns. No more! Be gone with you, foul thing! He screamed as he hurled his piece of the glass sphere onto the floor, quickly picked up by the small creature. Oh, never mind. The spores did something. So yes, I do need all of the pieces of the orb. One more. And I'm guessing it has something to do with his tail. But what? I could, s I could stab his tail? A little bit uh, extreme there, though. I don't know. Yellow. Oh. The small creature took the ball of hair sitting at the end of Burger Kungan's tail in one hand and the sharp dagger in the other as it carefully began to cut a few strands at a time until the tuft of hair came off. Okay, good. I was thinking he was going to stab his tail. Maybe that's a little bit less extreme. Mm, still not sure what to do with it, though. Oh. Mm, that doesn't make any sense. The size of the leather was far bigger than the size of what I just cut off, and now somehow the leather has shrunken. Massively. To look more like string. Anyway, okay, I have a brush. What do I do with the brush? Hmm. Maybe brush his tail and annoy it? Hmm. No. 
Oh, I'm probably looking for fingerprints. I just need like some graphite and I can get some fingerprints. I'm going full CSI here. Hmm. No, maybe not. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't combine it with any item in my inventory. That's obvious. Hmm. Nope. Okay. So. Would you like a brush, little Alva? Hmm. No. Maybe it's got something to do with these? As equals two walk beside one another in light, five acknowledge their place. Hmm. No. Maybe I tickle its stomach? Hmm. <laughs> no. But what is there left to do? Oh no, did I, oh I pressed that again. Ew. Creepy button. Oh, the fossil! It's gotta be the fossils, right? Carefully dusting around the fossil, the outermost layer of dirt around it came loose and accumulated in the creature's extended hand, revealing a set of bones sticking out from the cave wall. Soil. Inside the cave wall, packed between dirt and rock, rested the remains of an ancient creature. This doesn't look like anything I've met before. The creature muttered to itself as it tried to imagine what the creature had looked like if it had still been alive. Looks like... Hmm, I don't know, maybe a velociraptor. Yeah, it's probably a velociraptor. With the fossil uncovered and intact, the creature could easily pluck a couple of particularly pointy bones from it. Oh god. <laughs> e bone pie. Okay, so I'm gonna be making a key. Got it. But I'm guessing the order matters, right? Unless it automatically assembles itself? I don't know, let's find out. As the key did not fit the hole, it <laughs> Okay. Well, I noticed there's three markings on it. Medium, large, small. So, let me stretch here. Oh, that stretch feels good. Oh, yeah. Oh. I just needed to clear my mind because I think it's been poisoned. So, um, let me get this straight. The key to figuring out which order to put the bones inside of the skeleton key that came off of the fossil... Mind you, that's the fossil that your creature said it didn't want to disturb because it might hurt it. But after dusting it off, you just rip out some bones, because why the fuck not? Um, <laughs> and the guide for how to open the casket is actually on the casket, and it just perfectly corresponds to the exact three bones you just happened to pull off of the fossil that just happened to be right next to it, that you just happened to get. I, it, it doesn't make any sense. It makes zero senses. Out of all the senses something can make. It makes zero of them. It does not qualify for any of the senses. 
It is senseless. E even the Census Bureau wouldn't touch this. There's no sense. N d it, 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 what? It, no. That makes no sense. Why would the password for the bone key that you get from the fossil be on the chest? Like, what? Was it built specifically for this room with the knowledge that the fossil was there? It's not as if those bones had to be that size. You could have broken them off in any damn size you wanted. It... Uh, uh, why? <laughs> I don't even know how to react to that. I. It hurts my brain. My brain hurts. Brain pain. Okay, what, what's in here? What's in here? No, no, not here. I, I don't care. The creature reached inside the casket. Okay, cool. Sorry, my patient. <laughs> After that, my patience has just like shrunken. But I'll try to calm down. Try, try to calm down. Calm, calm down. Come. Locked tome, tomb, tome. Maybe I can just straight up give that to Burka Gungan. Burga, Burga Kungan. Here's your ancient knowledge. Now give me your shard. N never mind, I'm just kidding. Oh, of course, you combine the gem with whatever. Here you go. The creature once more presented an offering before Burger Kungan. The tome immediately caught his eye. I recognize the runes on this book. It will surely unveil the true secrets of this place. Hand it over. The creature followed his command and gave Burger Kangan the old tome. Hmm. It appears what I seek is indeed down in that hole. Bring it to me. There should be a way. Take this glass shard. It might be a key part in this. Make haste, little creature. My patience is growing thin. Calm down, Burger Kungan. You've been here for, what, 50 million years amassing this mound of gold? Mounds of gold? I think you can wait a couple more minutes. Okay. Now I have an orb. Hmm. What do I do with it? Hmm. Can I use it on this in any way? Hmm. No. Can I pour some soil on this in any way? Hmm. No. Can I place it on any of these altars? No. It really looks like it belongs on this altar. Hmm. Really does. I can't imagine any way I could possibly solve this because I don't I don't have the information to solve this, do I? Doesn't seem like it. Hmm. 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 No. No. That Take a peek at the walkthrough. What do I do, a walkthrough? Help me out. Skeleton key, uh huh. Poisonous smoke, crack the fat nose troll. Yep, it's about getting all the shards. Hmm. 
The hints from the smaller altars in the upper level tell of their correct positions. Oh, apparently I can solve it. With my current knowledge. Wait, so this tells me somehow which order it goes in. As equals two walk beside one another in light, five acknowledge their place. What? On a throne of eight, the golden wheel governs the day. Look, I gotta be honest. I don't know exactly what they're saying, so what I'd have to do is I would have to write down every single word that they're saying and then compare it while directly looking at what I have to solve to try to make sense of it. Six remain shrouded, inhabiting the moonless night. Lowliest of all remains the Earth Dweller, ambition stifled by the wheel's light. Yeah, I would have to write down every single thing and then compare it to what I see on there. Hope I have it in the correct order, and then try to actually attempt to get everything into the into the hopefully correct position. I'm sorry, I don't feel like doing that. I really don't. So let's just go through it. Alright. Press the rightmost play twice. Press the top plate once. Press the bottom plate twice. And it says we should be done. Excellent. Out of the darkness, a crackling and glowing stone emerged lighting up the cave with its overwhelming energy as it levitated calmly above the altar. That's very pretty. An ask... 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 Stin. ask... ask... Jesus Christ, that's hard to say. Ask... ask... Stin. ask... Stin. ask... Stin. That might be a more unpleasant word to say than crisps. Ask Stin. Ask Stin. Ask st Ugh. Damn you, Swedish words! In the center of the chamber, floating above an altar covered in rune carvings, was an Askston. Formed as lightning strikes the earth, an Askston is said to be infused with the power of its creator, rumored to have been used in ancient times to ward off the sky's thunder, as well as beckoning its rumbling. Ward off the thunder. It's so cool, all the, the strange and very specialized things, all of these... All of these different, uh, I don't know, creatures and beings and whatever you'd call them do. This looks powerful and dangerous, the small creature thought, as it stood in awe of the great energy being discharged from the stone. As the creature got closer, sparks and cracks of lightning began to emanate from the Askston. Noticing this, the small creature backed away in reverence. Can I use the orb here? Yes. In the center of the chamber, float. Wait, so what did that actually do, though? As the creature. Okay, it didn't change anything. What about the soil? Hmm. No. Oh, I probably need to uh, do the rune that makes this thing go... Yeah, do this. Mm-hmm. Mm, do I want to touch it now? It looks like it's going to shock me to death. As the creature... No. In the sand... I didn't actually change anything. This looks...
All right, what now? Hmm. Maybe the trolls have something to say. The small creature dared not disturb Burger Kangen. Well, that's something of value to present to it. I think I have something of value. I have a floating orb thing. Yeah. Am I missing an item? Right, I've activated it. I have one item in my inventory. That does nothing. The rest of the bones were stuck too deep in the wall for the creature to free them. The small creature reached... What the heck am I missing? I can't converse with it, right? This looks powerful no. and... So... Walk through time again. What shall I do? Mm, combine the, yep, uh, move down to the lower level, put the orb on it, right? Yep, and then use the fire rune to power the orb. Okay, I just did that. Wait. This is the next thing I have to do is press the air rune, which will make the alpha sing. But... I can't press it. I must have missed a step. Maybe it's related to the soil. I either missed an item. Yeah, I must have missed a step. Where was I supposed to use the soil? Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. <gasps> Here we go. Here's a solution. Hold on. Wait for it. Do you know what's going to happen? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. The small creature exclaimed as the Alva emerged from the hole. She responded with a quick nod as she slowly stumbled over to rest on a nearby stone. Don't you worry. You stay there and regain your strength. I don't... I don't even... Apparently that's a little, like, miniature staircase? Or what? How did filling up the hole with dirt even prevent that? Or cause that? I... <sighs> Take a breath. Take a breath. The, little, the cute little Alva's okay. The Alva, tired from wandering about in the tunnels beneath the floor, was taking a rest on one of the stones inside the cave. I'm sorry I got us into this, but don't worry. We'll make it through, the creature said with confidence to the Alva, who answered with a faint smile. I wonder if I'm ever going to get at its wings. The creature gave the Alva a gentle, reassuring pat on her head. Okay, now I should be able to make her sing. Here we go. Decision, but I feel this is our last chance to get you wings. 
Let's head up, shall we? The small creature said to the Alva, who, with a hearty nod, once more crawled up behind its ear. Okay, time to go. At last, after all this time, it's within my reach, Burger Kungan proclaimed, looking at the Askston with hungry eyes. This, this is what we have been looking for? A stone? A piece of worthless rock? The slim-nosed troll spouted in anger, yet his words got drowned out by the fat-nosed troll's deep voice. It must be a special rock, right? What does it do? Burger Kungan began to explain in a calm, almost threatening voice. This, my brother, will keep us safe as the wheel in the heavens passes above our heads. It beckons and bends the mind of the dark clouds and the hammering they bring with them. He turned his attention to the small creature. Come now, little creature. Hand it over to me, Bugger Kungan commanded the small creature, seemingly hesitant to touch the crackling Askston directly himself. The small creature looked at the Alva and then back at Bugger Kungan. No, I will not. Did you not hear me, little imp? I said, bring it to me, Bugger Kungan roared, furious by the creature's refusal. No, you don't deserve to have it. The creature yelled without a shred of hesitation. You dare defy me? I will crush you. I will crush you beneath my feet. And I will take the stone myself. Dirt under my feet is what you are, after all. Enraged, Burger Kungan began to twist and turn to free himself from the mountain's firm grasp. In his struggle, the cavern began to crumble, light breaking through the cracks forming in the ceiling. No, not again. The light, stop moving. The slim-nosed troll exclaimed in panic, yet his words did not reach the troll king. The creature and Alva paused for a moment to watch as the sunlight turned the trolls into stone before making their way out of the chamber. Passing through the crumbling copper gate, the creature glanced over its shoulder, only to see a cold mountain wall, untouched by being and man alike, casting a calming shadow over the clearing. The weary pair, staggering along the forest path, slowly made their way through the thick brush. As it happened, ending upon a path different than the one that led them there, as they felt the rise of the ground, the dark trees grew less imposing, allowing a wonderful view to greet their arrival at the top of the hill. How beautiful! The small creature gasped. I think I'd like to remain here for a while if you wouldn't mind. The Alva marveled at the sky as the creature carefully put her down on a slab beside it. I'm sorry for not being able to help you. I know I promised. The creature said with sad eyes kept at the muddy ground beneath its feet. That place wasn't at all what I'd hoped it to be. After remaining silent for a while, the creature nervously brought its eyes from the ground, 
greeted by the Alva's beaming smile. For although she could not speak nor fly, her glow appeared brighter than before. As they sat there looking out across the woods, the creature felt at ease and embraced by the sun's rays breaking through the treetops, it slowly faded as night made way for dawn. The Alva remained, humming a sad melody while looking at the stone now sitting beside her. The song filled the clearing, and as she took the last note, a glowing pair of beautiful wings had appeared on her back. Looking at the stone one last time, eyes filled with gratitude, she then rose from the ground, disappearing amongst the tree's canopies. And that, my friend, is where this story ends. Make of it what you will this darkest of nights, be it truth or myth. I have but shared with you what was long ago told to me in the glow of a fire such as this one. I only hope that you'll take care where you trod this night, for, as the story goes, it turns out, even a small, in the scope of the world, insignificant creature can be of significance to someone not that significant themselves. Aw, I got turned into a stone. <laughs> and I guess I did, um, when I started the game, I did come out of a pile of stones, didn't I? Voice acting Brian Hall. So indeed, all of the voices were done by that one person, the narrator, and that's it. Which is damn impressive. And they certainly chose the right person to do it. Because he did an exceptional job. Perfect voice for this. Really, really good. Obviously a very small company behind it as well. Let's see if anything happens after the credits. Because they appear to be over right now. Nope, just goes back to the menu. Alright, well. Let's examine it a bit. Yeah, let's talk about the game a bit. So my overall impressions are, um, it's an interesting game. I liked it, but it has a lot of large problems. However, I liked it despite the problems. Oh god, the menu music is so depressing. Stop menu music. Stop. No. Okay. So yeah, let's go into it. I'll talk about what I like about it and what I don't. So... What I liked most about it, and what kept me playing throughout the whole thing, for the most part, was the strangeness of the creatures and the things that you encounter. Around every single corner, there's always some very strange and something very new to experience and see. All of these strange beings from, apparently from Swedish, folk, Swedish folklore, they were fascinating. I found them really interesting. They were all different degrees of creepy for the most part. Which I liked. I like creepy things. And they certainly fit in with the very dark and grim aesthetic as well. So that's what I found most interesting about it. Is just looking at all these strange creatures, which actually I haven't looked at this yet, but I believe you can see them in the lore library. Yeah. 25 creatures apparently. Huss stomped. Guard stomped. Alv circle. Well, not a creature necessarily. Alf Stone, Alvor, Alf Queen, Nekin, Natrum, the Bruins Goob, the Hag, Vatar, Svarl Tulv, Grufru, S what, Silver? What the? That's not a creature. You shouldn't be in here. Nah, it doesn't say creature library. It says lore library, so that's fine. What is this? What is this play button? Oh. It actually reads that out. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah, I mean, just look at all these different creatures. <laughs> the bison, oh my god, that thing was creepy to begin with. But then when it uprooted itself and come and came out, Jesus. And then the draug, which scared the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Hi. The copper gate and the trolls. Yeah, just really fascinating stuff. And that's what I liked most about it. I guess the other major thing... Well, there's a couple other major things I liked. I really liked the... Well, <laughs> here's the strange thing about the art style. I like the art style, and at the same time, I'm not sure if it's a good idea. I think it's interesting, and I think it's really well executed. Like, the quality of the art, the quality of the art is very good. And everything has a very dark and grim sort of appearance to it, which I like. I found that interesting. And it's certainly an art style that I've never seen before. A land in perpetual night, basically. As if everything is just moonlit. And practically everything is grey. So it was unique. Which is nice. On the other hand, a problem with everything being grey is that everything was grey, for the most part. Which kind of leads, it kind of leads to a feeling of sameness. You know, everything is grey. It's kind of... I don't know, it just ends up feeling pretty oppressive. It's a grim world, and I'm already an insignificant creature. But between that and the, you know, the depressing music and... I don't know, it's just a really depressing game overall. Really, really depressing. Which, I like games that are... You know, I like games that are disturbing. I, I don't expect games to be happy. I think a wide range of emotions should be present in games, just like they should be in books and movies and whatever. But... It felt like there was almost no rays of light. To the point where it's just... I feel, you know, I feel kind of sad just playing it. And that was made up for, uh, somewhat, just by the strange creatures that were fascinating to look at. But at the same time, it, it kind of felt like... God, I don't know if I want to play this. This is depressing. It's so depressing. It feels like the entire game world is just pressing down on me. Trying to suffocate me. So I'm kind of torn about the art style. On one hand, it's unique. On the other hand, it's... bloody depressing. To maybe too much of a degree. I just... I, I think it might have been... Maybe if there was just more contrast. If it, not everything was just gray. But if there's a significant amount of stuff that kind of... Uh, just, you know, just to change it up. To actually see color was a rare treat like that disturbing sow's eyes. Where are you? You. It's even gray here in the image, but they're actually red eyes. As creepy as it was, it was nice to see some color. So yeah, that's about the art. Um, the third biggest thing I would say I liked about it was the narrator. Who apparently is one person who did the narration as well as all of the voices. And he did a damn good job. He has a, he has a great voice. Very deep and very rich. And a very good actor as well. And to do such a wide range of voices. From the gigantic trolls to the tiny, insignificant creature. To the normal narrator voice that he does. Is very impressive and very good. He did a damn good job. Okay, let's see. Another major... Not necessarily major. Another kind of... Mm, I don't know, like, the four, I guess the fourth of them ranking these. I'm not really going to rank them. Screw that. I'm just going to say another interesting thing I liked about the game is... That it kind of reminded me a little bit. Not, not a lot, but a little bit. Of Botanicula. And... If you're familiar with Botanicula... Well, I'll just explain it. Uh, the One of the really cool things about Botanicula is that it's an adventure game where you ex like you kind of you touch everything. You can pretty much touch everything in the game world and all sorts of weird stuff happens. And most of it isn't actually important for solving puzzles or making progress. It's just fun to mess around. You click on stuff, you don't know what's going to happen, and interesting stuff occurs. 
you know, so there's kind of like a childlike wonder sort of thing going on where you're just touching stuff and you're curious to see what happens. And I felt like they had some of that in this game, mostly through the runes, because you come onto a new scene and you can use the runes and you have practically no idea what they're going to do. You have some vague idea, but they could be required to solve a puzzle, they might open a pathway, or they might just make stuff move, or they might make a creature pop up. So I thought that was kind of neat how every new scene you come onto, I would just click all of the runes and just, you know, see what would happen. There's a bit of fascination there, and just curiosity. That was fun to explore. Now, it certainly wasn't done to anywhere near the degree of Botanicula, but it's sort of the same basic idea. I think. Sort of the same... The, sort of the same thing that I found interesting. Was also present here. So I think in terms of what I like... That pretty much covers it all. The biggest thing was... These strange and fascinating creatures. You know, the, the lore behind the game. And the art style. Which I'm not totally sold on, but I still, I still found it interesting. And the narrator and the... Just, you know, fascination. Or not not fascination, the... I don't know, the, I guess rewarding your curiosity sort of thing. Just watching weird stuff happen. And playing around and messing around. So those are the things I liked. Now, in terms of stuff I didn't like... Well, you can probably spot... You can probably guess what the biggest one is. Puzzles! Yeah! Me having a problem with puzzles in an adventure game? No way! That must be such a surprise. But seriously, this is one of the best examples of... Uh, of what I think is how not to do puzzles. Because they were mostly really, really bad. Some of the worst I have ever seen. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I've seen some really bad puzzles, and this is... And this is right down there with the worst. And obviously it wasn't enough to stop me from playing it. Since I, well, I finished the game. And I did overall enjoy it. But... Yeah, let's just say that I'm glad I played with the walkthrough from the start, and I do appreciate the developers providing a walkthrough for you. That's very cool. But I'm very glad that I actually used the walkthrough, and I used it extensively, because virtually every single time I used it, I went, I'm glad I used it. I, I didn't feel like I spoiled the game for myself. I didn't feel like I was taking away any sort of an interesting challenge. I just felt like I was saving myself from wasting my time. Which is how, yeah, that's how most of the puzzles unfortunately felt. They're just incredibly illogical, unbelievably contrived, and they just, by and large, felt like complete time wasters. Which is why I used a walkthrough to get through most of it so that it didn't waste my time, at least as much as possible. Which is something that I think I've been doing more and more with adventure games. Is, if there's, you know, if there's something in an adventure game that I like, if, if I really like the story or the characters or the art or something and I want to experience that, and if I think something like the puzzles, for example, if I think they're taking away from the parts about the game that I like, then I will remove that that block. You know, the, in this case, this, the puzzles were a massive stumbling block to my enjoyment of the parts of the game that I actually liked. Which is why I tried to remove it as much as possible with a walkthrough. However, it's very unfortunate that they're even, you know, that way. Even using a walkthrough still felt like I was wasting my time a bit because I still had to deal with the puzzles. So it didn't completely fix the problem. It just made it a lot better. Um, I definitely, I would have given up on this game long ago if I didn't have the walkthrough. I would not have been able to stomach it. It would have drove me absolutely nuts. As it is, I could just be slightly annoyed by the puzzles and kind of just look at them from a detached, humorous perspective and think, oh my god, why are they like this? And I'm so glad I don't have to solve it without a walkthrough. But they were bad. They were really, really bad. I could use many examples. Unfortunately, though, if I started using examples, I think I probably would go through every example from the entire game because virtually every, exa every puzzle in this game is an example of how not to do a puzzle. Pretty much. But I guess one really, really big and good example of how silly the puzzles are is the one right towards the end of the game where you're opening that chest underneath the trolls. The one with the skeleton key. Literally a skeleton key. I think that's a really good example 
of how absurd the puzzles are. I mean, you need to cut off the feathers from the tail of one of the trolls, or not the feathers, the fur, whatever, and then attach it, uh, bundle it all together using leather, which suddenly the leather shrinks down massively in size and becomes tiny compared to how it was before, so that makes no sense whatsoever. These scales are completely off. And then you have a brush, and then you use the brush to brush away the dust from the fossil in the wall, you don't really have any particular reason to do this. You don't have any reason, logical reason to think you need the fossil in any way, or that it's going to give you any sort of valuable information, but you do it because it's simply the only thing you can do. And then after your creature, your tiny insignificant creature, as he's so often called, after he says that he's worried about hurting the fossil, uh, he suddenly decides to rip out the bones, the exposed ones. Which just so happens to be a bone that has some holes in it, as well as three little pieces that make up the exact number of... I don't know what you'd call them. Of... Key bits. The, the bits on the end of a skeleton key. It just so happens to have the perfect holes. And you just so happen to have the exact amount of bones, and all three of them are different sizes. A small, a medium, and a large. And... Even though there's no real reason the bones would stay inside of the other bone... Very much. Not, I mean, why wouldn't it just fall out? I, I don't even know. But that's not, that's not besides the point. The solution is apparently to look at the front of the chest where whoever designed the chest freely, freely gave away the solution. But no, they didn't give away like exact dimensions on how to craft your own key. No, they only gave away relative sizes. A big, a medium, and a large are the only three sizes visible on the box. And they just so happen to correspond perfectly to the three different sizes of the bones that you just happen to get out of the fossil in the wall. I mean, can you talk about contrived? That makes no sense. Why would you put the solution? Why would you put the design of your key on the front of your box that you want to stay locked? And secondly, why would your solution only apply to a skeleton key that came from a fossil in the wall, like 10 feet away. That, I, what? <laughs> it makes no sense. And that, that is constant throughout in the puzzles, they're just... You really, you really can't use logic to solve most of the puzzles. Most of the puzzles need to be solved by just random bashing your head against a wall. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating the slightest bit. Most of the puzzles are truly not logical whatsoever. I guess another example is the Groove... 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 However you pronounce her name. That creepy creature in the mines. Yeah, remember how she was... Like she wanted to prepare herself for her lover's arrival? And then... After hearing that, I got to a point where I was stuck. And then I looked at the solution, and it turned out the solution was to combine a... F what was it? A flute, I think? Combine a flute with some... Bones, I think it was, that you stuck inside of the holes, and that created a comb. So that allowed you to... You combed her hair. So... Look at how random that is. She said she wants to prepare herself for her lover's arrival. However, she never mentioned anything about her hair being in disarray. So I had no reason to think that I needed a comb whatsoever. None. That never even entered my mind. She, you know, she wanted to prepare herself, but she never specified in what way. What did she need? A bath? A necklace? I, I don't... She never specified. I never had any logical reason to even think of making a comb. But let's skip over that. Let's say you did know to make a comb. Let's say you, kn you knew, you know, you knew that you needed one. You, you couldn't even make a comb out of those two things. I shoved some bones inside of a flute. What would make the bones stay? They would fall right out. There's no reason they would stay. It makes no sense. And then on top of that, what happens after you comb her hair is... Wasn't that when she just, right at the end of combing her hair, she dropped, uh, what was it, clamps or something like that? So that's what you need to do. You need to make a comb 
which you don't even know that you need a comb, and you need to make it with ingredients or parts that wouldn't even actually make a comb, and then you give them to her, and then she gives you an item that you don't even know that she had, and you don't even know what you need to do with it, and you don't even know that you need it. Like, it's random. You just go places, you do stuff that doesn't make any sense, and then other stuff happens. It, it's just really, really bad. So I think that's enough about the puzzles. Yeah, you get the idea. They're seriously some of the worst puzzles I've ever seen. And again, the walkthrough eliminated a large part of the problem with the puzzles. However, it still took, you know, it takes me out of the game a lot and it's still annoying. I still feel like the game was trying to waste my time with how the puzzles were designed. And I think if it didn't have them, in the way that it did, it would have been a lot, a much more condensed experience and would thus be a lot stronger for it. Like, the, the puzzles just felt like fluff. Like an endless amount of fluff. Which would have been absolutely intolerable without a walkthrough. And with a, with a walkthrough, they were barely tolerable for me. So I found them to be a major problem. Yeah, that was the, that was the biggest problem I had with the game. Um, there was something else. What was it? Oh yeah, okay, now I remember. I always forget something major in the end. The end wrap-up of games, it seems like. But yes, now I remember. So one other thing that I thought... Uh, that didn't quite work for me, is just the main... The main story, I guess. I guess you could say the story arc. For your character. So you start out... And you don't remember... Really who you are, I guess... Do you have amnesia? I'm not sure if you actually have amnesia, but you don't really know what you're doing and you're searching for your place in the world. And it looks like you kind of just came out of death, because you came out from under a pile of rocks that had a cross above it. So you're a strange creature in a strange land. Trying to make your way. Which at first I found interesting. However, the story never really... goes much of anywhere. I mean, relatively early on you find the wingless Alva. Who then basically becomes your main point to, w to what you're doing. The story mainly becomes about getting her wings. However... The main, the main story of finding your way, and her main story of finding her wings, even though it does wrap up to a proper conclusion in the end, kind of everything in between the beginning and the end, I, I didn't really feel a strong... I never really felt motivated to keep watching to see what would happen in the story, because it never really felt very... Ah, what's the right word? It felt aimless. And kind of just... Almost pointless. You're trying to find your way in the world, and you're trying to find your wings, but the stuff that you're doing just feels like random stuff is happening to you. It doesn't really feel like you're particularly making progress. Even though you are going towards this place that is said to have... the powers to give people wings or, or something. Whatever it was. I never really felt that, though. I never felt that drive coming through. It felt kind of aimless and sort of like what I was doing was a bit pointless. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm not using the right terms here to describe this properly. But there's just something about the way the story was told that just didn't make me feel all that invested in, I guess, the story arc of the main character. Or any of the characters, the main character and Alva. Or Alva. The Alva. That's not its name. After all, it doesn't even seem to have a name, actually. Which is kind of strange now that I think of it. Maybe they don't have names. I actually don't think they do. Just the Alvor and then the... The Alva Queen or Alvor Queen? I'm not sure about the right tenses there. But anyway... Yeah, that was the other major thing I wanted to mention. Okay, so in wrap-up, overall... It's... A game that has major problems with this puzzle... Puzzles... And... Some problems with... I guess you could say the story arc. 
but it's also quite interesting. I like the art style. I really like the main narrator, who does everything, all the voices, and did a great job. I like the strangeness of the creatures that you see throughout the game. They're just fascinating. Very fascinating. So art style, narrator, the interestingness of the creatures, the the cool little playful things that you can do with playing around with the runes and just seeing stuff happens. Just seeing what stuff happens, that's really cool. So overall, I think it's a pretty deeply flawed game, but I also found it interesting and I enjoyed playing it. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching me play through Akinit, which I hope, once again, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And thank you for watching.